Hi everyone, welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. We're going through some idioms from my weekly lesson and we've just reached this part here that begins with being British. Being British, I needed a plan to run up to my neighbor's apartment and start shouting for them to turn off their taps or even making a melodrama out of this was not the thing to do in 2024 Britain. Okay, so to make a melodrama out of something means to create an over-excessive um, reaction or narrative, okay? So these days people want quiet lives. I know I do. So to make a melodrama out of something is to make a big song and dance out of something which isn't really required. Oh my God, there's water leaking, you know? <laughs> yeah, and? Yeah, so you can hear that, making a melodrama. Yeah, something which is not recommended these days. And of course, in the next uh, verse, it says, uh, or the next sentence, I didn't need to remind myself that to keep calm and carry on was the order of the day. So I'm sure you've heard this, keep calm and carry on. This was always our Queen's instruction for us. Yes, very proud of the British people. Keep calm, carry on, you know. It was very much an aristocratic, royal way of advising us not to make arguments with people. And When things go wrong, you just stay calm and you get them done. And that is very much a British thing. Um, the order of the day also... Um, I think comes from our military. Uh, it just means it was the thing that had to be done, the order of the day, the command of the day, the thing that was going to get done on that particular day. Okay, so we use it just to talk about what needs to be done. Oh, I think, you know, I'll finish my project. That's the order of the day. That's the thing that needs to be done today, the order of the day. Very nice thing to say. How's work going? Oh, fine. Yeah. Uh, today, actually, um, making a podcast was the order of the day. The most important thing, you know, uh, the order of the day. We use that a lot. Uh, right. Let's continue. The problem with neighbors these days is that we don't mix. We all come from different social, cultural, economic, and educational backgrounds have little in common even for general conversation. This does not compare well to the past where we all worked in the same factory and had the same social and educational background. Getting along was much easier in the past because we had tribal and work connections. Towns were created on that premise, yeah, on that idea. Yeah, that's right. Um, that premise is the idea, the principle that you start with. Yeah, and we, we do have whole towns here that were built up around steelworks. The government built accommodation, which is still used locally. Um, uh, but the, the actual factories have all gone, which means you have a town with really nothing in it. We have a lot of those. Um, my view is that these days peace is something we all recognize, and despite our diversities, Something we all want, at least somewhere in our hearts. And just to finish with this next part, the first port of call, um, yeah, that's from our days at sea. Um, if you imagine a boat going from port to port, the first port of call was to phone my landlord. So the first stop, the first port for the boat to stop at, uh, as a metaphor, uh, I'm saying here my course of action, the first thing I had to do, the first port of call is the first thing. So, for example, oh, when I get to work today, the first port of call I need to do is to make sure that I fix my computer ready for the day. Some people might say my first port of call when I get to work is to make a beautiful coffee <laughs> before I even begin the first port of call uh, and as i mentioned it comes from our military days when boats 
used to travel around in the first port of call, the first port it would go into. Right, let's talk a little bit about motivation. So it says here, how do you react in an emergency? What can this teach you about yourself? Um, what does that tell you about your learning experiences? Okay, so since this is National Radio Day, I'm going to ask the question, how is your listening in English? Um, also, do you listen to the teacher? It's an interesting question, that, because uh, in talking to many of you, uh, I tell you, yeah, please try shadowing. Please try to listen to radio stations around the UK. Please listen to my podcasts. Then I meet with you and I say, so, what have you been doing with your English? Nothing. What, do you think I'm Harry Potter? Um, have you done really absolutely nothing? Oh, no, no, too busy, too busy. Um, and it does raise the question of whether you actually have time to be learning. Um, if I tell you to do something, I do understand we're all busy people, but if you don't do it, wow, you're going to have problems because I'm not just saying go and listen to the radio and try shadowing because uh, I think it's good advice. I'm telling you that because you're looking for ways to improve your English. And then, of course, the next week, you'll be back and you'll be saying, oh, my English is terrible. Uh, what, what are you going to do to help me? And I'm thinking, well, if you just listen to me, <laughs> that would be a good place to start and then do the things that I tell you. Uh, of course, also, there's how is listening in English generally. I know many of you um, really struggle with listening. It's one of the hardest things, especially in exams, like the IELTS exam. Uh, the listening part is one of the most difficult because you're supposed to recognize surnames, zip codes, or postal codes as we call them here. So that's a question for you to meditate on today. If I've told you to do something like shadowing, uh, build up a vocabulary list or whatever, have you done that? And also, how is your listening in English? You know, we all lead such busy lives these days, so it's I do understand it's a, it's a very hard thing to try to make time for English. But that raises another question. Do you really have time to learn or do you even want to learn? So a few questions there for you to think about. Right, that's it for me. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll be back tomorrow with more bits from our weekly lesson. Okay, see you. Bye.